One of the oldest concepts in project management is the concept of critical path. And I truly doubt that many project managers, do they really know what does it mean? And do they really know how to calculate it? Most of the PMP candidates, most of the CAPM candidates of other credentials, they are struggling because most of the time they think that, how do you find a critical path? They open the software and click critical path. Let's now try to understand what is behind that button. Critical path is one of really one of the most relevant concepts around project management. And I know that many times people say, okay, we, we don't need to think in the schedule because we have such a dynamic environment. But many times, finding this path will give you some reasoning on the relevance of everything you need to do from the start of a project up to the end of a project. And this is an example. So I took 12 tasks, each of them one day duration, four day durations, four day durations, three days, and I organized this in a network chart, okay? Any software can do this, you just need to link and I did just basic finish to start. It means for K to start, F and I needs to finish. This is why we have these two arrows combining to generate K. But when I'm doing this, I need to understand what, what is more important. Let's suppose I need to prioritize resources. Should I prioritize G or H or F? What is the most relevant one in terms of time to my project? And this is the root of the concept of critical path. And the critical path method has four components. Did you see this ES, EF, LS, LF? First, let's try to understand this. What is the concept of ES? Means early start. It means is the best possible date that that task can start. It means if everything happens perfectly, what is the best, the dream date for that task to start? If early start is this, early finish is what? Is the early finish of that task. And basically it's very simple. The early finish is equal to the early start plus the duration. If early start is a thousand and the duration is eight days, early finish is a thousand and eight. It's simple like that. These are all extremely positive, right? This is exactly what I want so th that my project happens, everything perfect, everything happening at the early moment. But then I go to the bottom and there, is, there are two concepts, LS and LF. LS means late start. What is a late start? It's the latest possible date that you can start that task without delaying your project. This is your late start. It means if you start after that date, you are in trouble. And the late finish, the same concept, the late finish is the latest day you can finish that task without damaging. This is our Target, this start, this is what I don't want to mess up because I want to know exactly which of these 12 tasks they affect directly this finish date. And this is the concept of the critical path method. So with this four, of course, you may say that late finish is equal to late start plus the duration. Okay, this is obvious 
and it's the same analogy. So these are the initial. I will not talk yet about the free float and the total float. I will talk a little bit later. So what do I need to do to identify which are the tasks that belong to this critical path? In the critical path, the name critical plus path. Path, it's a path of tasks between start and finish. And it's critical because that group of tasks cannot delay. Because if you delay them, and if you do not recover, if the other tasks, they are executed at the same time that you expected, this project will become late. Okay? So now, what do I do? I will start by doing what is what we call forward pass. And what is the forward pass? In the forward pass, I go from the start to the finish. I don't even look the bottom part of the network. I will only and only concentrate on these fields at the top. I don't care about this at this moment. And what do I do? I will combine this and try to understand what will be the two dates that will come here or the duration that will come here. So let's start. Of course, the first point or the starting point, it's zero, right? Means as soon as I'm allowed to start, I am starting. Then what do I need? If zero is here, so the end of this start is zero, the beginning of A and B is zero. It means I can do them on zero. I can do them on zero. Then what happens after bringing the zero to here and the zero to here? I need to calculate the early finish of A and B. Early finish, early start plus duration. So, very easy. Zero plus one, that is one. Zero plus three, that is three. Easy. Now what happens? Let's do this first part. The early finish of this means the best date for A to finish is after one day. It means C can start because C only depends on A. C can start immediately on day one. So this number here goes to this number here. Why? Because C can start as soon as A finish. And if we are talking about early, one day, one day. Of course, I'm not here calculating that you need to start on the next day and this. I'm, I'm calculating a continuous flow, okay? So, 1 plus 4, that is 5. Okay, let's go here. 3 comes here on D. 3 plus 7 is 10. 10 comes here. 10 plus 2, 12. Then 12 come here, 12 plus 1, 13. Let's stop. Okay, we did this and we did these two initial ones. What happens after C? C goes to E and C goes to F. It means this number 5 here goes to here and also to here. So 5 comes here, and 5 comes here. 5 plus 4, 9. 9 comes here, 9 plus 3, 12. 12 comes here, 12 plus 4, 16. 16 comes here, 16 plus 3, 19. We did this, we did this, we still need to do this three. Okay, 5 plus 2, that is 7. Okay, but now on K, 
and M. We need to think a little bit more, because what happens with K? K depends on F and, it's not OR, and I. F, until F is ready, it takes you seven days. But until I is ready, it takes you 13 days. So if K depends on F and I, which number will come to this box here? You have just two options, seven or 13. Which one goes? The largest one. Why? Because it takes, for example, it doesn't matter if you start this at seven days, I is not ready. G is not ready. D is not even ready. So you need to wait 13. So every time that you have this junction, the largest number goes. So on the forward path, always think on that. If you want to memorize for an exam, the largest number goes. The largest. So between 7 and 13, 13. 13 plus 8 means 21. Okay. But now an M. I have the same, the same challenge. K was F and I. M is L and K. L takes 19 days. K takes 21 days. M needs to be 19 or 21. Which one? The largest. 21 goes here. Means this number goes here. 21 plus 4, 25. Finish. 25. Let's stop here. What do we know so far? This project from A to M takes 25 days. This is for sure. If you need just to calculate the duration, it's a very simple. If you are using, for example, Microsoft Project, this is exactly what Project does. Okay? And, and you may ask me, oh, so if Microsoft Project does, why you are teaching this? It's the same reason why you cannot use Excel if you do not know mathematics. You will be extremely dangerous. And I want you to know what is behind. Because then you can use the tool, the, the IT tool, the software you want, but you know what is behind. And of course, this is a, a super simple example. Usually, when you are in an industrial capital project, we are talking about thousands, truly thousands of boxes like this one. So you need to use computer because it makes more sense. You will not spend, you know, a week calculating that. Okay, so far I know 25. However, I still do not have the answer for my question. Okay, which are the critical ones? Between E and D, what I should prioritize if I need to do some prioritization, if I need to allocate resources, allocate money to make sure I finish this on 25 days. And these drive us to the second part. I will just erase this and this will drive us to the second part. That is called the backward pass. And what is the backward pass? Now, go with me. You need to imagine that this now became the start, this now became the finish, and now all arrows are on the opposite side. This arrow goes from this to this, this from this to this, and this to this, and then opposite, up to here. Because now I am going back to calculate the backward pass. Okay, how do I do that? Go with me. First step, 25 days, I put it down here. And why now 
I will feel delayed fields. Because remember, when I go from the end to the beginning, everything will happen at the latest possible time. This is exactly what I'm looking for now. So 25 is here. Then what I do, I put 25 here. And instead of adding like I did on the forward pass, I will deduct 25 minus 4, 21. Then what happens? Imagine that this arrow is now on this side and this arrow is going to this side. This 21 goes here and this 21 goes here. Okay, I'm doing the same. 21 minus 3 is 18. 21 minus 8 is what? 13. Okay? So I'm doing, remember? Remember, late finish is late start plus duration. So late start is late finish minus the duration. Minus the duration. So it's easy like that. It's easy like that. Late start. So what I'm doing, it's this. 25 minus 4, 21. 25 minus 4, 21. And then what I'm doing, I'm moving this late start to the late finish of the task that comes, what? Before. Okay. Then what I do, 18 here goes here. 18. Minus 4, 14. 14 comes here. 14 minus 3, 11. 11 comes here. 11 minus 4, 7. Okay? Let me stop here because this is more complex. Let's stop here. Okay. Now what I need to do? I need to do the same here. 13, that is here. Imagine that this arrow is moving this direction and this direction. So what happens? 13 comes here. 13 comes here. Then 13 minus 2 is 11. 13 minus 1, 12. 12 comes here. 12 minus 2, 10. 10 comes here. Remember, this arrow, 10 comes. 10 minus 7, 3. 3 comes here, 3 minus 3, 0. Okay, hold on. We still need to do this 2 here. But now we have the same problem. Remember, on the forward pass, F and I, I pick it, F and I, I pick it the large one, 7 and 13, I pick it 13, remember? Now what I need to do, imagine now C. C has two options, 11 or 7, right? Because now I'm going on the other side. So which number will come here? I have two options, 7 or 11. This and this. Which one goes? Always when you are on the forward pass, you use the largest. On the backward pass, you use the smallest. Always remember this because you are always trying to do things as late as possible. When you move from start to finish, as early as you can. When you are from finish to start, as late as you can. So between 11 and 7, which is the smallest one? It's 7, right? 7 minus 4 is 3. 3 comes here. 3 minus 1, 2. Now let's do the very final step. You have two options to come to the start here. One is 2, that can come here. The other one is 0, that can come here. Which is the smallest one? 0 or 2? It's 0. 
And I need to tell you, every time you leave from zero here, you go and you come back and reach out to zero, you did it right because you closed the loop of the process of the forward and the backward. So what you just did, you just calculated the critical path. But now we need to identify, okay, Ricardo, where is the critical path? Then it's so simple. It's so simple. The critical path is the path with the tasks, where the top and the bottom are the same. Zero, one, two, three, not the same. One, five, three, seven, not the same. Five, nine, seven, eleven, not. Nine, twelve, eleven, fourteen, not. Twelve, sixteen, fourteen, eighteen, not. Sixteen, nineteen, eighteen, twenty-one, not. Five, seven, or eleven, thirteen, not. 1321, 1321. Oops, it's the same. Let's put the red here. 0303, oops. 310, 310, oh. 1012, 1012. 1213, 1213. I already marked this. 2125, 2125. I know the critical path. The critical path is B, D, G, I, K, K, and M. So these six tasks are the critical ones. Means this path, if I delay anything and I'm not able, of course, I'm always imagining that I'm not able to recover later, it means I will change the finish date. It will not be 25. And now, one very thing, very easy thing to do. Every time that you are on the critical path, both fields that related to the float means the, la the amount of time that you have free is zero. Means if you are on the critical path, you have absolutely no free or total float. You have no float. So then it's very easy. You put zero, 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 and here. Okay, so we did this, but now we have a challenge. And what is the challenge? I need to calculate, okay, how much float do I have? How much float do I have on these non-critical tasks? Because every task that is not critical has a float, period. Has a float means has some time that you can use. But what is the difference between F, F, or free float and TF, total float. First, what is important, the concept, float. Float means the amount of days, hours that you have available for you to do whatever you need without creating a challenge or a damage on the 25 days, okay? But what's the difference between the free and the total? So the free float is your own float. It means it's the float that a task has that belongs to the task, that does not belong to anyone else. It's a float of that space. Means I'm not using a float that someone uh, after me has. It's my own. Means if I use that float, I will not damage anyone. Anyone. No other task. For example, the free float of A is the amount of delay that A can have without damaging C, E, F, B, G, D, whatever. 
what is the total float? The total float is your float plus all other float that you may found in front of you with only one restriction. You cannot delay the project. You can damage and create challenge to every single uh, uh, task down the road. You cannot change this day. Means you not use your own. Uh, uh, the best example. Let me give you a perfect example. Imagine that I have in my pocket ten dollars, and I am. I live with my parents, and I depend on them. Okay, so I'm not independent yet, and they have a hundred. So what is my free flow? It's 10, because with this 10 that I have in my pocket, I can use, and I'm not damaging anyone. But what is my total float? Is my 10 plus the 100 of my parents, 110. After I spend 110, my parents will go on debt. This is absolutely the same concept. It means A can damage C, E, H, J, L, everybody. But it cannot damage the finish. It can use its total, its free float, plus all the other ones. This is the, so the, the concept of free float is uh, in, in some ways an honest float. You know, it's honest because it belongs to you. But the total float is, is not so honest because at the end, you are transformed because as soon as you eat all the float, you are transforming other tasks in critical because they don't have floats anymore because you ate that float. So now let's see how do we calculate this. First one, let's calculate the total float, okay? Now let's only think on the total float. How do we calculate the total float? This is the easiest one to calculate. Basically, what do we do? We just calculate here, okay, the amount of float that we have on each single task. 21 minus 21 is zero. This is why I put zero. 21 minus 19 means this has a total float of two. Means L, has a total float. Let's not calculate the free float yet. It's basically the late finish minus the early finish or the late start minus the early start because the duration is the same. So 18, 16, 2. 14, 12, 2. 11, 9, 2. Okay, let, let's go here. 13, 7. It's 6, right? 11, 5, 6. Okay, right. Okay, now what we do? 7, 5, 2, 3, 1, 2. Here, all zero because it's critical. This is the easiest. So it means A has two days of total float, two days of C, two days of total float, E, two days, H, two days, J, two days, L, two days. And F, Six days. Okay. Now, what do we need to do? Let's calculate the free float. The free float is a little bit more tricky. So, what do we need to compare? We need to compare the early finish of one task with the early start of the next one means this number with this number. So the early finish with the early start. And when you compare these two, you calculate that the free float is simply, simply the early start of the following minus the early finish of you. Okay, I, I personally, 
I'm not a big fan of formulas. I'm much more uh, keen to understand, okay? So look this, look this. 19 is the early. But this one will start only on 21. So there are two days here. But these two days, it belongs to L because it's the last one in the chain. So the free float of L is two days because early start of this, 21 minus early finish here, 19 is equal to two. Okay, now let's do this. Now let's compare this number with this, because now I want to calculate the free float of J. So 16 minus 16 is zero. So let's try to understand the meaning of what I did. J has no free float, means J has no money on its pocket. Every single money or float that J has comes from stealing the float of L. And look, this is the same here. 12, 12, free float, zero. Nine, nine, free float, zero. All good. Now we need just to calculate this here. So now let's see. Five, 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 and five. Zero, two. One, one, zero, two. It means all the float that A, C, E, H, and J, they have, is by using these free floats of L. Now, let's calculate the free float of F. Again, early start of the successor, 13 minus early finish of yourself, seven. It's equal to six. The free float is six. So look what is interesting here. Let me just change the color. The tasks F and L are the only ones that have their own float. Means F and L, F even more, six days, it means if you need to delay this one up to six days to benefit and make sure that you can do this, great strategy. Great, because you have six days of free float here, like you have two days here. However, remember, if A, for any reason, is late by two days, what happens? What happens if A, instead of one day, becomes three? Okay, just, just to speculate, what will happen? It will eat the float and suddenly everything here will become critical. This is why the critical path changes all the time. When you start executing, things are becoming more critical. This is why we always say that usually at the end of a project, everything is critical because at the beginning, people just eat all the possible float that may exist. And at the end, you are just with everything is zero or even negative it means you need to find ways of recovering to finish this on time. Look, I know it's, this is very basic and this is very simple. So why I spend this? Because it's very important that you understand in your mind the mathematics behind this. And then when you know this, you can use any software you want to calculate this. Any software, but these will give you the rational. And what I did, you can download this to exercise if you want just to memorize, because I know it's, you know, it's a lot of numbers. And also, I prepared for you the answers, and you can download in the link here this. And you can practice. This is an absolutely simple one. You can find on the web many of them. And I'm not saying that with this, you will become a master in project management. But this 
is one tool that will give you some rationale when you are in a network to understand where you should focus on. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell button to receive notifications of future videos.